Father, we bless you and we thank you. And we present everything to you, Father. Receive our worship. Receive our praise. Be pleased with our worship. Be pleased with our praise. Speak in this house today. Get all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's open up our Bibles to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, beginning with verse number 35. Matthew chapter 9, verse number 35. Jesus is on a mission. Look at somebody say, he's on a mission. He's, he's forgiven and healed the paralytic. Uh, he dealt with... Um, Matthew, the tax collector, uh, two blind men were healed. Uh, he caused a man who was mute to speak. And then we move to the latter part of the text, and Jesus is uh, here with his disciples. And the word of God says in verse number 35, then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. Somebody say compassion for them. Because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And the word of the Lord is blessed. So why don't you look at some people and just tell them, and, and, and mean this from the depths of your heart. Don't say it if you don't mean it. I want to be compassionate like Jesus. I want to be compassionate. Compassionate like Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High God. When we look at the text here, we see that there were many sick people throughout Galilee. And I want to look at a couple of things here. I want to look at uh, the compassion of Jesus. And then I want to look at the command of Jesus, the compassion of Jesus, and the command of Jesus. Amen. Because when we look at the situation here, and, and, and we look that there is a word compassion, and today is Compassion Sunday. Somebody say compassion again. Compassion. Amen. C compassion is, is a word, and compassion is something that is needed more of in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. We need more compassion. Amen. And, and, and the word as it is used biblically, compassion is to be moved inwardly, um, to, to have tender mercy, affection, pity, and empathy towards something. When you are compassionate about something, um, you have a very deep feeling toward that thing. And, um, you know, um, some of us, I, I, um, you know, I, I, you can just think about some of the things that you are really compassionate about. Some of us are compassionate about chocolate ice cream. 
that we have a deep feeling toward chocolate ice cream. Some of y'all snubbed your nose up at chocolate ice cream. Amen. Some of y'all are still, even as I'm saying it, just like, I don't, I don't like chocolate, but you like strawberry or vanilla or, or, or something. But there is, come on, something. There is something that you are what? Compassionate about. Amen. And so when you're compassionate about something, you, you know, you, 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 have, you, you have empathy, you, 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 have, you, you have sympathy, amen, and, 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 and sympathy it, it, it is, another, it is, is another form of it, is um, you, you have the capacity to share somebody else's feelings. That when you sympathize with someone, you, you try to put yourself into their feelings, to have the same feelings, to feel the same thing that they feel, amen. And so compassion is sharing the feelings of others and possessing a desire to not only share in those feelings, but to try to help in whatever need they have. Well, the Bible tells us that we have a Savior who is compassionate. Hallelujah. Amen. We have a Savior. The Bible says that he can be touched with all of the feelings that we experience. Hallelujah. And so we're saying today that we want to be what? We want to be compassionate like Jesus. Amen. And when we look in the text here, Jesus, as he was um, I'm, I'm looking around and, 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 and of all of the, the hurt and, and the pain and the, and the weariness and, and, and the scattered sheep, Jesus said this. He says that the harvest is plenteous. There's a whole lot of people out there who are in need of something. But the laborers are few. Saints of God, there are people we need to reach. There is so much work that needs to be done in the kingdom of God. And one of the greatest dangers of the modern church is that we don't see the importance of the work that is to be done outside of the walls of these buildings. I, 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 we, we have a book in our house, and um, um, we have thousands of books in our house, and close to it if not. And I was trying to find it, and I asked Sister Russell on yesterday, where is that book? Because um, I, just, I just saw it on, on, on one of the shelves. Um, and the book is called Too Busy to Pray. That... Um, the church, I'm not talking about everybody. See, because the church is not the building. The church is the ecclesia. The, the church is you and I. Touch yourself, church, church. Uh, tell, tell yourself, I'm the church, amen. And, and, and unfortunately, the, the church has become too busy in churchy stuff. And that we're forgetting about the great commission, the great mandate that Christ has put on the church. In Matthew 28, 19, 20, he said what? Go ye, therefore, to, to teach and, and to preach the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the church has become too busy to evangelize. I don't get no amens. Church want to have ministry meetings all the time, fellowships, conferences. Amen. Uh, some of us ought to just be conferenced out. We go to conferences and, 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 and still don't come back changed. Every conference on the earth and nothing changes. But the vision here is that we exalt the Savior, equip the saints, and what? Evangelize 
you, you, you know what, people of God, anytime a call is given to go out and to do anything in any evangelistic setting, we should just have an overflow of people to where we turn people away, say, you know what, you, you come next time. I ain't getting no amens up in here. Amen, but you better say amen because I'm telling the truth. And the Bible says, and you shall know the truth. Who want to be free in here today? <laughs> and the truth. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to, I'm just going to toss, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm just going to um, tease today. Y'all should have been there on Friday. Um, Pastor Jay, um, John Nelson, he really, he preached. I'm just going, I'm going to teach here today. Because anytime we have any, any ministry in this church, evangelism should be interwoven in that ministry. Even when the, um, e even in our servant, servant hearts dance ministry, evangelism should be interwoven in our youth ministry. Evangelism interwoven. Amen. In our music ministry, evangelism, I'm not getting any help in here, interwoven. In whatever ministry we have, there should be no ministry where there is not a component of evangelism because that's who we are. Amen. God has called us that we are to love God passionately and love people how? Patiently. Look at somebody and say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to love you patiently, even though sometimes you get on my last nerve. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. You, you know you feel it sometimes. You might as well just go ahead and tell them. You get on my last nerve, but I'm going to love you. Come on, spouses. Nudge, nudge, your, nudge your spouse. Children, love your parents. Nudge your parents. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to love you patiently, mama, daddy, papa, mama, grandma. But you know sometimes you just get on my nerve, but I got to love you. <laughs> sometimes we ought to just be free to say what we really feel because it is backed up with love. Don't say what you really feel if it's not backed up with love. Some of y'all was getting real excited. Yeah, Pastor, I can say what I want, but it got to be. It has to be backed up with love. So let's look at Jesus' compassion. Jesus' compassion, verses number 35, um, 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 uh, thir 35 and 36, we, we, we see that Jesus sees their pain. The Bible says that when Jesus looked uh, at all of the lost people around him, that he saw them, Elder Annie, as they really were that he was able get this y'all he was able to look beyond their brokenness their weariness of self-sufficiency because some may have been trying to depend on themselves their self-righteousness their their self-confidence he saw the pain he saw the loneliness he saw the, the misery in their heart because the word of God says that he saw that they were weary and that they were scattered like sheep without a shepherd. And if we're going to be honest today, many times we come into the house of the Lord and we're wearing all kind of masks. We are the great masquerade it's, and sometimes it's like we come to a masquerade party a masquerade ball looking a certain way on the outside but on the inside there's pain there's turmoil there's there's hurt amen yeah we can shout the hallelujahs and the glories and the Thank you, Jesus. We, we got religion down. We, we know how to do all the right gestures. We know how to move the right steps, amen. But on the inside, there is pain and there is trouble. There is discouragement. And many times, there are some of us who really just want to quit. 
Look at somebody and say, but Jesus sees us. Yes, he does. He sees us as we really are. And, 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 he, and, and, and he says that they were fainted. They were weary. They were scattered. And, and to scatter literally means to be cast down or thrown out. And, and Jesus saw that they were um, um, cast out and, and thrown out. But I praise God, hallelujah, that since I've met Jesus and I know his word, that I know that I'm not thrown away. Bless the name of the Lord. I know that I'm not a castaway. Hallelujah. Because the Bible tells us in, in 2 Corinthians 4 that we are cast down. We're hard-pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Hallelujah. So we praise God. Hallelujah. Because he is a compassionate shepherd. And he says that, he says that when I look at them, Jesus was saying that they were um, like sheep without a, a shepherd. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on sheep this morning, um, but I will tell you that, you know, sheep are not the brightest animals. Uh, sheep must have a leader. Somebody say amen. amen. Sheep must be told what to do where to go, otherwise what happens to sheep? They, they stray away and they scatter, amen. But we praise God that we have the good shepherd, the great shepherd. Psalm 23 tells us that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not warrant. He, what, he makes me to lie down beside green pastors. Amen. Aren't you glad that the Lord don't send you the brown stuff? Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. That he, he makes me to lie down beside green pastors. He leads me. See, 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 a, see, 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 a shepherd will lead. He says, he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me. Where? In the path of his righteousness. Yea, though I walk through the valley. I'm talking about what a, a shepherd does. The valley and the shadow of death. I, I fear no evil. Why? Because the good shepherd is still with me. That his rod and his staff, he, he comforts me. He, he prepares a, I'm talking about a good shepherd. He will prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies that he anoints my head with all that my cup. I'm talking about a good shepherd. And then a good shepherd, he says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And so sometimes we just need to go to Psalm 23 and just remind ourselves that that the Lord is with me, that the Lord is for me, that the Lord is not against me. And Jesus saw the multitudes and he saw them just as they are. Now, I was studying on yesterday morning and, and the Lord dropped this into my spirit. I, this, I, I wasn't planning on doing this, but um, kept seeing the word shepherd there. Some, some, somebody say shepherd. Somebody say. And, and um, there is false teaching going on. There's heresy. And we have to get away from the, these false teachings because we can't get away from God's plan and God's order. We can't get away, I'm laying a foundation here, for God's plan and God's order. Because there is a role for the pastor or the under-shepherd and the church. 
to fulfill what God has ordained for his people. Some of you are saying, well, well what are you talking about, um, 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 Pastor Russell? Well, there's a teaching out there and there is a movement out there that is saying that I don't need a pastor. Any of you ever heard that? I don't have to have uh, an, 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 an assembly or, or, or covering. I can go directly to Jesus. And you can. But that's not Bible. Because in Jeremiah 3.15, the word of God says, and I will give you shepherds or pastors, what? After my own heart. Who will what? Feed you with knowledge and understanding and judgment. Amen. So the Bible says that God said, I will give you pastors after my own heart. And if you... Read further in Ephesians 4.11, the Bible says, and he himself gave some to be what? Apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for what? For the equipping of the saints of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ. And so there is, there is a need for a pastor or shepherd because a shepherd is a gift to the body of Christ. I'm going to say that one more time. Amen. I'm not sitting up here tooting my horn. Amen. I'm sitting up here just telling you that a shepherd is a gift to the body of Christ. And when someone comes with this foolishness that I don't need a pastor and that I don't need the church, that I don't need this, you need to tell them you are walking in heretical teaching that is false teaching when you come and accept that type of doctrine shepherds are supposed to be what after God's own heart okay. and and everybody that say that they are shepherd are not shepherds after God's own heart. See, because Jesus is the good shepherd. He's the ultimate shepherd. And no pastor after God's own heart is going to try to replace Jesus. But would rather lead people in right relationship with Jesus Christ. So why would God send a prophetic word in the Bible giving pastors after his own heart the office and the gift to the body of Christ with the purpose to, to do what? To feed the sheep with knowledge, come on, understanding and judgment. That's what the pastor after the, the Lord's heart will, will do. He will feed them with what? Knowledge, come on, say it understanding and judgment amen amen and see it it it, it breaks a, a a pastor's heart when a pastor goes before the lord prays for the people of god I'm, I'm studying the word of god just excited about what god is about to do in the body of christ and then when the pastor shows up, the people that the pastor has been assigned to speak and to give knowledge and understanding, they are not there. Ooh, I'm not getting any amens up in here. Amen. Because a pastor, an under-shepherd, is a gift to the body of Christ. And one of the ways that God uses his word to reveal to you is through your pastor. 
who's gifted and ordained to speak into your life. Now, if you honor a pastor that's not gifted and ordained and, and is not a pastor after God's own heart, leave. Go find yourself a place to where you have a pastor who is after God's own heart. Come on, somebody up in here. Anybody that's a part of Fountain of Life, if you don't believe I'm a, I'm, I'm a man after God's own heart, you have permission to leave. Because you should not be in a place where you are under a man or a woman of God that is not after God's own heart. Because, because if you're in that type of place, you're going to get punked. I'm just here to tell you. You got to be careful who you sit up under. Because I'm just here to tell you, I'm just going to be honest. There are some pastors that were not called. Some he sent. Y'all know what's getting ready to come. And some just went. So you got to make sure that you are up under a pastor after God's own heart. Now, if you under a pastor after God's own heart, then you need to do what the pastor says as the pastor follows the word of God. Can I get amen? Can I get a, 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 a clap on that one? Y'all know that these, these type of messages are, are, are kind of tough for me because I, I don't like to really um, um, do anything that's going to kind of put me up front. But, but, but right now, I, I just got to learn how to get past Bert and just begin to just stand and just, um, 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 some, somebody told me, I can't remember who it is, somebody told me last Sunday, said, said um, Pastor, since you done turned 55, you just say whatever you want to say. <laughs> I've lived long enough to where I have a right to do so now, amen. And I ain't, I'm, I'm, I'm not taking back anything. I'm just gonna stand flat footed. I'm gonna tell you that I'm your pastor. I love you and if you will follow what God has given me, I'm telling you, I'm prophesying and speaking and declaring in your life that you will move into realms that you cannot even begin to imagine. But some of us are still stuck in, 